It is a big week for fantasy football. Your fantasy playoffs are on the way. We've got all the matchup breakdowns. We've got starts of the week and a whole lot more. Do not miss a minute. Click subscribe. Stay with us for the rest of the year. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time. <laughs> you got me on that one. <laughs> I almost blew it. I really did. Was it you were going to go too long? I No, I like uh, somehow I forgot my normal. You like, just I, forgot what you. Well, I knew Mike was bringing the football time. And so I got into the, ah, uh, and then I was like, wait, you, what, it's what? football time? <laughs> I mean, I almost said, ah, uh, it's football time. That would have been a problem. Oh. Yeah. Well, we could have done it together. Then I remembered um, what to say. Welcome in one and all the fantasy re- footballers. Let's see. What do I say? Welcome. Uh, I say, ah. Yeah. 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 I went through. <laughs> Which the, vowel do I go I with? went through a lot of vowels. I went e- through all of them. Everything but why. Um, yeah. Do you take any issue, Mike? You, you often complain of the English language. Do you take issue with the sometimes vowel of why? Oh. Does that bother absolutely. you? Absolutely. Yeah. That absolutely. seems like a thing that would bother you. Yeah. <laughs> now, see, the, you, you often talk about the fact that you also don't do small talk mm-hmm. and you don't like elevator conversation. Right, right. What if you brought some of these issues that you have with the world up in those oh, elevators? Like you could complain to people. I would love to. Been working with my youngest on, uh, what is it, superlatives. And now I can't remember the other one where it's changing, you know, like big to bigger and biggest hmm. and it's like well well, how do you know if it has to be uh more in front of it or at er at the end of it and you're like you just have to know you just it's a trial and error thing there's no real rule you just you just, you just learn it you, you memorize it. yeah eventually you learn it welcome in one and all it is football time it is thursday we have starts of the week we've got matchup previews we've got injuries to talk about we got the boom boom kicker i i thought we were maybe done with that boom boom after last week boom boom (laughs) it got canceled i mean i i thought maybe after last week that was kind of like the uh season finale or series finale felt like a finale the way that that megalodon chomped on the derriere of the plane it so might have been the finale for a lot of listeners you're telling me there's more to the to I'm the falling, tail i'm falling from the sky brother i was gonna say I think stay for, tuned i think for the first time i actually am interested in what happened because uh the kicker was not he hadn't met his demise in the last right one. he mm-hmm. saved him so this is the first time i've one been able to track it at all and two i'm wondering what's coming next so let me tell you as soon as we can retire it I'm down. <laughs> but, but then how will anyone ever hear about uh, McManus again? That's a good point. Yeah, I mean, maybe he has a Mc, you know, kicker rankings somewhere. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Let's jump right in. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. I did forget there used to be a Mike's Gripes hashtag. <laughs> So when Mike had something to complain it was about, a special channel for was our Slack. A, yeah, because you were like filling up all the channels with your complaints, mm-hmm. and then we made you your own. Were you, were you the only member of the channel? No, no I was in. I no, got to see. Yeah, a lot of people tuned in. I don't call them complaints. I call them like for, observations, right, of the world. Negative observations. <clears throat> yeah, negative observations, uh, like open air stadiums and th- that type of thing. Yeah. Oh, wait for this week. It's raining nationwide. It does seem that way. Yeah, we, we were talking about it uh, yesterday. Jason was looking at the weather, and it's like, is there a place there's not a chance of rain? Yeah, domes. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> All the domes are safe <laughs> Walked from right rain. into that one. I did. <laughs> All right, news and notes. Uh, Texans wide receiver roulette. Noah Brown returned to a limited practice with the knee injury. Uh, this, one, this one is uncomfortable. Tank Dell. Full DMP on Wednesday with a calf injury. Uh, D'Amico Rines, if you saw the press conference, his head coach, said, we'll see how the week continues to go for Tank. We expect him to be okay. It was said very plainly. It's a scary injury being a calf injury because this is one of those where you could get out there for the game and 
you know, start going full speed and right. injure it and exit the game. So um, TBD will monitor the practice reports. It's good that they are saying they expect him to play, and it's only a Wednesday practice that he missed. Schultz. Not has as good. a hamstring injury and didn't practice on Wednesday, so another one to monitor. Not only did he not practice on Wednesday, but he didn't play the end of that game. So this is one where I, if you have Dalton Schultz, if that's who you've been rolling with, he's been great. You need to be prepared. I'd I'd I would be uh, very unsurprised if he misses this week. Well, let's go right into another tight end then. Cardinals Wednesday practice report: Trey McBride didn't practice with a ah! groin injury. There's uh, rest. I refuse. Is he on groinindex.com? I'm sure he is. If he has a groin injury. Mike, how many times have I told you? You can't just refuse an injury. I know you would like that to be the case. Yeah, he's on He's on groin index. Trey yeah. McGroin. Yeah, he did not practice. Hollywood Brown did not practice. They're just resting their studs. No, no. What's the real commentary there? I mean, you got to be on. I, I have McBride in a couple of leagues. The, I'm looking to add somebody as insurance. Yeah, the, the real advice is you, you must be aware, but it also was just Wednesday. DeMario Douglas in concussion protocol didn't practice on Wednesday. Bailey Zappi scheduled to start potentially for the Patriots. Who cares? <laughs> Nobody cares. Travis Etienne day-to-day -day with a chest injury. We had told you on the waiver show to add Dearness Johnson just in case. Keenan Allen, DNP with a quad injury. I'm, I mean, this is... See, now are you worried about that? I'm not that worried about that, no. No. He uh he did because he always misses Wednesday. It seems like, uh, not always. He but he he does from time to time. He practiced last Wednesday, uh, limited on week eleven. He missed uh the Wednesday practice. Was full participant the week before. So I mean, it it is a real injury, but it's not surprising that they give him rest when they're making him catch one hundred targets a game. Did you see? You've seen his clavicle, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's a wild, ruined. that's a wild, ruined clavicle. Like that, that's um. It looks like a Photoshop job that someone did a really bad, like where you just you click and you you just drag a little spot out. It looked like they added a new bone to his body just to stick up right there. Uh, Dallas got her DMP on Wednesday. Chris Olave limited due to the concussion. It was good that he was on the field doing drills. Yeah, being limited is a really good sign because you want. Basically, the way that the concussion protocol works is there's a progression that has to happen, and a lot of times when you see people at practice but not out of the protocol, they have a chance to start that week. Yeah, like Douglas didn't play in practice on Wednesday. Olave was limited. Rashid Shahid didn't, didn't practice, probably not going to play. And then tonight we have a football game, throwback jerseys for the oh, yeah, Seahawks. For this, those are nice. Yeah, yeah. Um. They may solely those jerseys with the matchup, but we'll see. Kenneth Walker, doubtful. No, he's not going to be out there. No. That was today's news notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Well, we've talked about it for a couple of weeks now, but the Bears, Bills, Giants, Raiders, Ravens, and Vikings are all... On week 13 by, you don't get those players. I'm sorry. You can't just refuse the buy. Yeah, that's true. Why? I mean, and next week is the Cardinals and the Commanders. Why? I mean, what are we, what are we doing here? I, I think not considering you enough. I think that's the problem for most things. I am in agreement. Yeah, yeah. The Colts are six and five, and they take on the four and seven Tennessee Titans. The DraftKings Sportsbook line has Indianapolis as one point favorites. The over under is forty two and a half. Since the four touchdown game from Will Levis, we have uh, an average of two hundred one yards per game and two total touchdowns in that span. So he is who we thought he was. <laughs> He was. He, was. he is. He who is. We thought, who we thought he was. What he was. There Wiz? You go. Wiz. <laughs> Got any other thoughts, Jason? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, in this game, um, my guy Zach Moss, he's gonna be. Uh, yes. He's yes. gonna be. You know, a very uh, important. involved, important role. We we saw him play this Titans team earlier this season. Twenty three carries, one hundred and sixty five yards, two touchdowns. Um, you know, he is 
who I thought he was a great <laughs> whiz. Oh, yeah. Uh, just a, a really uh, well above average running back with extremely good contact balance, soft hands, big body back. Uh, is just a guy that I've always really loved the talent of. Right. No, for years. Forever. I, I mean, mean, you you have my guy, Zach Moss. I'm sure you got some jersey orders in, uh, but Moss is in play. You play him. Derrick Henry, uh, you know, the Colts are favored by one. It's kind of a pick em situation. When the Titans win, which has been four times this year, he's averaged 18.8 fantasy points per game. When they lose, he's half that. So this is a huge disparity. We do those. We do these truth episodes that come out after the season, and uh, you know we focus on disparities in wins and losses. And you know Derrick Henry this year that's been a massive uh, situation. So Tajay Spears not a lot of opportunities in yeah. recent weeks. But also real quick for Henry, it's not just the it, it's a pick 'em. So I'm pretty confident in Derrick Henry this week. Also. The Colts, you know, the last six weeks, 27th against fantasy running backs on the season 30th. So this is this is a play Derrick Henry week. Uh, Gardner Minshew, too nerve wracking for me to stream him. I, mean, I brought this up. Uh, yeah. I know that I know that on 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 paper there there's an opportunity. I my concern is that there have been a few of those, and uh, we have. One touchdown, zero, zero over the last three weeks. So one touchdown in three weeks, like you're looking for 202 from Gardner Minshew, and I don't know if you can get that. No, you're you're hopeful if you play him that he uses his legs. He can scramble, but he hasn't been recently. Uh, and, and I do think that they're going to give a lot of work to Zach Moss on the ground. So Gardner is like a, a break glass in an emergency situation, but you could probably stream better than Gardner. Michael Pittman and Josh Downs. I love both players this week. Mm -hmm. Pittman is a, a regular uh, in terms of PPR value, but Josh Downs had 13 targets in his return from injury. Do not miss your opportunity to put him out there against the 23rd ranked wide receiver defense in Tennessee. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins. The target share has been fine. The he did have a haven't. well. He had a. I want to bring it up because when he played Indianapolis the last time, it was one of his better games of the year. Eleven targets, eight for one forty. But uh, that would have been Tannehill, right? It would have been Tannehill. Are we comfortable with Hopkins considering the bye weeks and yes. those situations? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, he's he's an okay wide receiver three type play. Are there other names from this game that we need to look no, into? Indianapolis beat them 23-16. I think they'll beat them again. Yeah, the, the, that's it. Well, if you think they're going to beat them again, then you expect that it's not snowing in Vermont? Uh, Yeah, I mean, maybe I, I'm not such a uh, – I don't buy into the Vermont snow narrative as much as maybe you do. Mm. Uh, I buy mm. into the win or lose narrative quite a bit. So I think uh, I think Derrick Henry he's probably good for a touchdown in this game. Should be. The Chargers at four and seven take on the New England Patriots, who are two and nine. Saw a nice video of Tony Romo at the beginning of the year talking about how good the Patriots were going to be, that no one would ever roll over them, that uh, they may have a game here or there that's you know doesn't go their way, but no one's going to roll over this team. They're going to be in every game. They're two and nine, and they're about to give Bailey Zappi a start. Oh, is did, did we get that news? Yep. yep. All right. Zappi is expected to be the starter this week. Uh, so with Zappi starting and Demario Douglas most likely missing this game, you are going to need a lot from Ramondre Stevenson. The matchup is pretty good. The Chargers defense it's been better of late, um, but it's still a a. You know, a team that you can run on. You hope that Ramondre, I mean, his his opportunities have been really, really good lately. The last couple weeks has been extremely involved. 78% of snaps last week, 21 carries, five targets. Um, so I think that's the only player here on the Patriots side that you're excited about. The DraftKings Sportsbook line here is the Chargers minus five and a half on the road. The over-under is 40. That gives the Patriots 17 and a half points. The Chargers 23 points. It is wild how many teams are in that, or how many running backs are in the the Ramondre situation this year. It's like 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 Saquon, 
is the only talent left on that team. Right. And then you have like Brees Hall, who, you know, Garrett Wilson uh, banged up or, you know, he's the other guy that has some ability, but Brees is on an island. And, and you know, Ramondre's on that island too in a lot of ways. It, Demario Douglas was the only guy giving you some signs of life. Thankfully, it's a good matchup. It's a good matchup, but it's a it's a really like a bad implied point total. Can you start Hunter Henry in this oh, game? Oh gosh, no. You don't think so? I don't. I don't like starting him ever. Okay. Like with Demario yeah. Douglas gone. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand the argument. It's just tough. I mean, like you have two gooses on the year now for for Henry. Yep, one last week. Like w I would be trying to play someone else. Okay. There are other good like, options, I think, this week. Like, would Juwan, you play the other side? Uh, Everett? Would I play Everett? Everett scored last week. I mean, would you play Everett as a favored squad or with a bad matchup? I mean, I think I would lean towards Henry, but I, I, I do believe that there are better options out there. Like Jawan Johnson, he, he is uh, widely available, and I think he's a good start this week. For what it's worth, I mean, the injury situation, like Quentin Johnson was benched. Uh, for Alec Erickson. They don't have Palmer. They don't have talent outside of Keenan Allen, who's now banged up. So, you know, confidence levels in Austin Eckler right now, I mean, his efficiency it's levels are terrible. It's low. It's, I mean, like, I'm I'm expecting fewer than 10 points oh as, a, as a manager. I hate that I'm doing this. <laughs> Andy's almost upset of the week. Oh man, I was just about to ask you the like, line. Like, do you do you really think that the Chargers can win this game by six points? I thought it when I, I don't. I thought it when I read the names at the beginning, and what your brain thinks about with the Chargers and what it thinks about the Patriots. But no, I don't. I mean, I don't think that. I think that New England might win this ball game. I mean, the the Chargers are just depleted emotionally. They're depleted injury-wise. Uh, they're going on the road. I mean, their defense is horrendous. Jason's right. I mean, no, I just picked Bailey Zappi in an almost upset. You're just, you're just saying he'll lose by fewer than six. I'm really pushing the limits of this thing here. Uh, I mean, I think you're okay. The uh, <laughs> Chargers are right. – they've lost three in a row. They can't win close games. They don't hit the over. Eight of nine games, they don't hit the over. So, you know, you play Keenan, you play Eckler with a blindfold on, you play Ramondre, and then you play Herbert and you check out, right? I mean, yeah. maybe you dance with Henry or Everett if you're desperate, but I don't think that there's um, I don't think there's much more to talk about in that yep. one. At least for Henry, in his favor is over the past six weeks, the Chargers 30 seconds yeah. against tight ends. But <sighs> – we, I mean, we all got, like, we all got tricked by the first two weeks of the season, where Hunter Henry was not only like excellent in his opportunity, he was a focal point of the offense. And I know he, he over, like, he had touchdowns in both of those games, but then he just they stopped going to him. Uh you did see Devontae Parker get more involved last week, it's, back from yeah, injury. I mean, he, he had five targets, but. Let me ask one more question from the game, just because the Chargers are in a tailspin. If you had the on-fire Denver uh, quarterback, Mr. Russell Wilson, uh -huh. yep. and he plays Houston, um, would you start him over Justin Herbert? Like, is Herbert oh, man. still a must-start uh, in that? We are down bad. Well, they, let me read you. I mean, last week, uh, obviously it was Baltimore. I mean, Herbert is a really tough uh, a tough guy right now because he finished eighth, second, and third in three of the last five games, and the other two games he was 25th and 15th against the Jets in Baltimore. Uh, I'm, I'm going to keep starting Herbert, especially the last two weeks. You've seen with the lack of receiving options, he is he is using his legs. He needs to right now, and that is, you know, he had 73 rushing yards a couple weeks ago, 47 rushing yards last week. It's something that he has the ability to do, doesn't usually do it because he's such a good pocket passer. So I, I'm going to stick with the Brock Purdy against Philadelphia. Oh, I'd go Brock. Brock right. Purdy to me is a, I mean, good against play. Philly, that's that's a very, very, very good play. Is Philly set up for rain? Of course. They don't have <laughs> no, a dome. No, that one is for sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, sounds right. Jason, will you will you be in charge of rain watch? 
I will be in charge of Rainwatch. Yeah. Now I'm guessing the the New England game's got to be the New England game. Uh, let me Where check. Yeah. Anything chance. northeast has to be getting some rain. So here's so here's uh, the the lay of the land across the country. It's basically every single game has a around like thirty percent chance of rain. So this isn't crazy awful terrible weather. Most of these games are ten mile an hour winds. So that even though it might be raining. It shouldn't actually have a massive impact on fantasy production. Rain by itself doesn't really affect the passing game as much as you think it would. It's only when it becomes very uh, windy. And for the most part, most of these games, I don't see any like incredibly concerning game. Yeah, let's remember like Buffalo, Philadelphia were playing in rain the entire time. And that game was, was filled up with well, a half. They figured it out. But that first half was bad. Sure. I, I guess I didn't attribute that to rain as much as pass rush and stuff like that. Mm. But, um, yeah, uh, let's take a quick break and come back with another matchup. <music> the Detroit Lions at 8-3 and three take on the 5-6 and six New Orleans Saints. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Detroit minus 4. Over under 47. Uh, what are we expecting out of this matchup? Wow, really? Like, are you surprised it's that high? Yeah. I um, mean, the, like, there's a good chance the Saints have no pass catchers. I'm not sure that the Lions' Thanksgiving Day performance was encouraging to the the, the bookmakers. Um, you have a team that over the last six weeks is now like l one of the worst teams against wideouts and, and quarterbacks, which is kind of not how it felt for a while. They've actually been giving the ball, uh, giving it up on the ground a little bit more as well. I am a little surprised at how high that over-under is, but Detroit's like pretty heavy favorites on the road here. So they're, they're passing defense. Detroit's passing defense has been very, very bad. And so it's one of those things where when you've got a great offense with the Lions and you've got a bad pass defense – the the games can you know the yeah the points can flow it's just about the saints you know uh, rashid shaheed is out michael thomas is on ir i it's positive on olave like we said with the practice but we'll see if he gets to play i mean if if you're going into this game and it's Derek carr is his primary wide receivers are at perry and lynn bowden i mean well, it would be alvin Kamara. Uh, it, yeah, but and it would be Taysom Hill and Juwan Johnson. But and, we've we've seen where games where Alvin Kamara is like the primary receiving weapon, and he gets a whole bunch of fantasy points. But the the New Orleans Saints do not get real life points. Well, I think I do I do think the tight ends are somebody that we need to talk about and recommend on the Saints side of the ball. Well, I mean, absolutely, they, they are they're going to be the primary receivers. I mean, last last week it wasn't much different right like uh, uh, Rashid Shahid went down early they don't have Michael Thomas and Olave went out injured and he went out at half I mean he had 100 yards by halftime and we but I think he'll be back okay based on the early news I mean I I'm not saying he's gonna be good for them I mean watching the Saints offense is very painful like that is excruciating I don't like it I don't want to do it it seems like a punishment I agree but Juwan Johnson uh he will be featured later but he ran the most routes of pass catchers for the team and this is, it's, we're at the point of the season so far in. It's hard to remember what Juwan Johnson did last year. Like, he was a very reliable weapon for them. He was a, just an absolute touchdown magnet to close the second half of the year. But he's been hurt. So, I mean, he's lost most of this year. This, heading into the season, the the beat reporters were very high on Juwan Johnson. I think it was uh, Nick Underhill was, mm -hmm. at, you know, asking for fantasy. And he his kind of comment was, I would be looking at drafting Juwan Johnson, and then yeah, that plan just fell apart. Well, and it could it, be back. Now. It fell apart in in part because they added Foster Moreau, and they had he didn't start the year with any attention. Like it was, it was bad. Despite all the snaps he was playing, he didn't have a ton of right production. So, yeah, I mean, I like him this week. Yeah. Would you Would you play? I mean, I play him over Logan Thomas. I play him over Henry, like you said before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, over Everett. Over Everett. Uh, yeah, I mean, and he may be a pivot for the Trey McBride manager if he's not available. Certainly. But you're not looking – I mean, are there any other sneaky plays on the New Orleans not, side? Not for 
I mean, if you're playing DFS where you can find a crazy value, um, <clears throat> Lynn Bowden, uh, A.T. Perry, guys that just are going to necessarily have to be on the field and don't cost anything, sure. But in your home leagues, while you're getting ready for the playoffs, trying to trying to get in, no, I'm I'm not looking at uh, I'm not trying to find a diamond in the rough here at wide receiver. For what it's worth, I have moved to the A.T. Perry side of that conversation between those two as a sneaky start or a DFS over play. Bowden. Over Bowden, because sure. I think he's going to be on the field a little bit more, and uh, neither of them had big production last week. So, Detroit. Mike, you have you have had the experience of watching Jared yeah. Goff uh, implode. Yeah, very closely as Jared Goff has been starting for my main league and my main dynasty league for the past couple weeks, and it is, it's, it's ended up okay, but it's been a very strange, frustrating watch of of a of a player who, for the first half of the season, was one of the better quarterbacks in the league, and then the last two weeks it looks like he just he got like men in black brain wipes and doesn't know what he's doing out there he, he definitely he was on a good streak of not turning the ball over and yeah. not and then now that's completely changed and he averages 39 nasty. pass attempts on the road the Saints defense has not been very good over the last handful of weeks it hasn't this is a defense that at the beginning of the year looked dominant they were dominant last year and recently they just haven't been putting up strong fights they're even middle of the pack against the run which has been like over the last several years, you can't run on the Saints. But I think this uh, Detroit offensive line should be able to win that battle against what we've seen from the Saints recently. So both David Montgomery, Jameer Gibbs yeah. are great starts. Like if you had both players, you should start both at the same time. Yeah, I would take that approach every week with both players. Their their team is kind of, you know, you have your top-heavy always start players they're pretty easy Montgomery Gibbs Amon Ra and Laporta they don't leave your lineup no they're they're in every week this week appears to be a good matchup for them because they are favored it is in a dome and for Laporta uh, you know the last six weeks the Saints have been the second worst against tight ends over the course of the season they've been bad when you adjust for schedule so Laporta should have a very nice week would you go Goff or Herbert uh, I think I would stick with Herbert. Herbert. Right. I'd stick with Herbert as well. Good. Yeah, Jamison Williams, you you know he's going to get three targets. And um, you're one just, drop. One drop. So that means out of those three targets, there's <laughs> two two non-drop targets. Mm -hmm. And and one of those could be a 70-yard touchdown. Yeah, I mean, that's he's not worth – I'd be trying to find somebody else. How can he not get targets? I mean, his, the snaps are going up. Have you seen Amon Ra's targets? Yeah, I I get that. Just it is. That's not that's not great news for Jamison Williams' long term value. Amon well, Ra it, is on one hundred and eighty five target pace. He's ridiculous. Which last year he had one oh nine with injury. The year before one forty six. This year one eighty six. Yeah, with Jamison Williams, I mean, you wouldn't even realize. Like the last seven games, he's played fifty percent of the team snaps. You don't even realize that to be true it's like he's not there 50 percent of snaps 50 percent drops so whatever that math equates to that's your odds of of a good game the falcons are five and six they take on the four and seven new york jets the DraftKings sportsbook line is atlanta minus two and a half the over unders 33 and a half oh, woof. i have zero confidence <laughs> oh, in atlanta man. offensive weapons going into new york outside of Bijan. yeah i mean the Jets have not been good against the run. Uh, they're as elite as it possibly gets against the pass. So you've got a good game for Bijan. You could see a situation. I could see a situation where Tyler Algier gets a surprising amount of work because if the Jets really can't do anything, if Tim Boyle throws, you know, a, a pick six, and uh, if, if Atlanta hops out to a big lead, you could see the hammer being used uh, by Arthur Sith. But Bijan does appear to be a very good play this week. Uh, last week, Algier had 10 carries for 64 yards as they if, put it, that one away. Yeah, against it, most Norris. of that was at the end, right? Yeah, and yeah. I, I just don't know if Atlanta can win this game or if anybody can win this game. I'm predicting a 10-10 tie. <laughs> I think it's going to be a close game. I'm going to say 
Like, who do you have? Just, just money line it. Just tell me who's going to win. Atlanta. See, I think the Jets will win the game. Oh, come on. Yes, Mike? Oh, I, uh, I will still take the Falcons to win. Tim Boyle? Uh, of course you That's don't. why. Yeah, that, I mean, it's it's fair. Um, Brees Hall was limited to a, due to a hamstring. Uh-oh, Ooh. I had not seen that. That was on Wednesday. Wait, is it time, Jay? Do we get – who – is Israel Abanacana? Yeah. Oh. Do we get some snaps? Is he? I, I mean, I mean uh, Dalvin would be the primary guy, yeah. but maybe. Uh, Abanacana if, don't want none. <laughs> if Brees Hall um, is limited throughout the week, uh, you well, know. There it the is. F- <laughs> we'll never use that drop again. I, I think, um, like, the Atlanta run defense is really good, and Brees Hall, like, he's been awful. On the ground, he's been atrocious. He's he's, and I'm not like he's much better than this if he had any help. But the last handful of weeks, I mean, 23 yards, 25 yards, 20. He's got three consecutive weeks where he doesn't break 30 yards rushing. Good. Yeah, and it's, four of five that he doesn't break 30 yards rushing. And and I mean, it, it's to say it's been atrocious, like that he's been atrocious on the ground, it's, is not. It's nice. Yeah, that's really kind. I mean, it's funny for a player that you're. Kind of always seeing as well. He's locked in your lineup because of the big playability. Did you see this quote from Robert Sala? Tell me. He said Brees Hall is a special talent. Oh yeah, I did see this. Yes, but there's the grimy yards that a back has to understand that he needs to get. Ooh, yeah, he that that happened recently, and like the the when you do the whole conversation, it doesn't seem as bad, but it still was. It was not a. Great look for for Coach Saul, in my opinion, to be dunking on anyone. Well, I, it, to me, it's interesting that it wasn't like we've got to help Brees. Like that wasn't the message. Right. It's like we've got to block. We've got to put him in the position to succeed. It was more like, no, Brees is making some mistakes, not doing what he needs to be doing. Because Brees yeah. Hall is trying to score on every play because he knows that if I don't score, we won't. Yeah, I mean, but that can mess up a running back. Yeah, yeah, oh, abs- uh, yes, it yeah. can. Jalen Warren, I'd play over Brees Hall. I'll put. It, I'll, oh, I'll start it there. Like I, I would definitely play Jalen Warren against Arizona over Brees. And Najee. And Najee. And 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 Moss. My Moss for sure. Yep. Moss is my uh, rankings and, have it set. Would you play? And probably. Did you say Najee? I'm yeah. Just, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, okay, I would I was play both through the list. That the thing about Brees to Brian bring Robinson? up Robinson. Against Miami? You should. Yeah, you should. Javante? That that's Houston? probably my line because I think Brees like let's let's remind people like Brees has been relevant because he catches the football. Like those rushing numbers are bad, but he's had a, a number eight and a number thirteen finish because in those games he had you know, here here's his targets. Like his his season long target pace over the last five weeks where he struggled on the ground is 105 targets for 85 receptions. Yeah, right. So, um, no, I would not play Javante just because I, I don't know what's going on with Javante. Like, I just don't have confidence with the three-headed backfield and the pass catching, and he's had some drops. Like, yeah. um, that's my line. All right, well, what about same archetype then? Zach Charbonnet against the Dallas Cowboys tonight. I mean, it's a guy pretty much all alone. Brees. He catch passes. I'll okay. play Brees. All right. And we we didn't bring... Although the, the hamstring... It, what if it, you don't know, and then you have to make the decision? He, he was limited on Wednesday. This wasn't a, a, a DNP. Didn't, yeah, he he didn't sit out practice, so I I'm not too worried. Yeah, I play Brees then. But uh, not mentioned in the news part because uh, there's I don't know there's a bunch to talk about. But Aaron Rodgers' 21 day window was opened. I don't know if anyone was on social media because there was nothing else talked about than everyone giving their Aaron Rodgers take. Did you see the practice? It's weird, man. Like there's video of, of him, yeah, yeah, taking snaps, dropping back, slinging the ball. It's like, okay, he's he's practicing, he's, he's, he's playing, yeah. He's Andy. How's your watch on? Are you still adamant that he does not make it to the field this year? I I thought there was an interesting article that came out by Charles he Robinson. Agreed that mentioned the fact that one of his motivations to get back out on the field could be to save the job of his head coach and his general manager, which. Look, I actually buy that. I buy the fact that if he they, they had a couple of games that was like what you thought the Jets would be, even if it doesn't get them to the playoffs, if you had two games like that, to me it validates 
the general manager and the head coach as like, oh, this was and clearly – too. Yeah, this was clearly just the injury. Mm -hmm. um, but I also heard him on McAfee say, like, look, it, my health comes first. I got to get cleared by everybody. Then he said, uh, are we in it? Is there something to gain? Like, is, is there a reason to be out there? Are we fighting for a playoff spot? Right now, you know, they're four and seven. Yeah, so, they're, they're not fighting for a playoff spot. So I, I'm, I guess I... I guess I I'm still about eighty percent that he doesn't get on the field, but if he can stay healthy through whatever this practice process is, obviously he'll be really ready to go for next year. It, this is not old school Achilles for the quarterback. It's an interesting and important conversation for fantasy because Garrett Wilson could win people championships. You know, you don't think about if somehow Rodgers, yeah, like if Rodgers ends up back for the fantasy playoffs, all of a sudden Garrett Wilson becomes a star again. Yeah, this like Garrett Wilson has the to use the analogy. He's like gotten used to living on a cup of rice a day, mm -hmm. and still kind of like can do some stuff with mm -hmm. that. And if you gave him a meal, he'll be, what happens? He'll be full. He'll be energized. Strong it's, muscles be like Popeye and his spinach. <laughs> it, it was so tough because in our keeper league, like I really wanted Garrett Wilson to hold through. Like I knew he wasn't going to help me a lot this year. Yeah, but I wanted to hold him through as a keeper. But I didn't want to pay the price of the keeper, uh, but but like I wanted to target him because next year we're going to talk a lot about him. Yeah, we'll be right back where well, we were. Which that that that's what the the thing I'm looking forward to, if possible, would be Rogers just yeah giving us that glimpse of what we were hoping for this year. And I think that what would if he go comes back way. and he plays terrible? Yeah, there's <laughs> there that is a big option, or gets. Yeah, Garrett Wilson, though, this week with Tim Boyle against these Falcons. He's a highly targeted player that you can put in as like a wide receiver three. That's and, how I see it. And hope too. that he gets double-digit fantasy points, but he doesn't have a ceiling with Tim Boyle. Tyler Conklin is a, uh emergency pivot option to me. He had five targets with, um, with Boyle last week, so I'll just throw that out into the okay. universe. Anybody else from this game? Kyle Pitts hit waiver wire in the listener league. Like he's just sitting at the top. Wow, of, he's just mm -hmm. sitting at the top of the listener league because he is that's useless. A, that's a fourteen team, fourteen double team. flex league. So where everybody and I mean everybody's gone. Yeah, except for Kyle Pitts. <laughs> go, go go grab him, play him. You you can do it. Kyle Pitts is uh, current pace fifty seven for six eighty one and one. Dude, his pace over the last six weeks is uh, about. The, I mean, no touchdowns. That's the problem. What he doesn't a disaster. The truth is, he doesn't look himself. He hasn't once this year. Ever since that injury, disaster. Yeah, there's nothing you've seen like a flash that looks special. Where you're going, it's entirely and only the quarterback's fault. Correct. It, it, it seems like a combination of bad quarterback play. He doesn't look himself, and the scheme they just don't give him anything easy which now he's is still silly. like uh what like 16 years old 17 years old yep 23 i believe younger than dalton kincaid yeah so there's there's lots of future opportunity for him if he can get healthy um yeah all the atlanta beat writers kyle you're on the line here just talking about a nagging injury for kyle pitts sure we we talked about pitts's dynasty future on the dynasty show so if you want to hear that go uh yeah. download our dynasty pod was a good talk. It was. It was. Uh. It was. It was helpful. I, you know, we'll leave it for the pot. The Arizona Cardinals are two and ten. They go to Pittsburgh, where it will probably rain. And the Steelers are seven and four. They are five and a half point home favorites, according to the DraftKings sportsbook. The over under is forty one, but that gives the Steelers uh twenty three and a half points. The Cardinals eighteen. This is the first time the Steelers have been favored by more than three points since week ten of. 2021 Cardinals will do that uh last week the Steelers offense decided to join the 21st century they gained 400 yards for the first time all year the defense held Cincinnati and Joe Mixon and Jake Browning to uh you know an inept 25 rushing yards uh it was a, it was strange though because it was almost like the Steelers would move the ball with ease and then they would get you know close to scoring, and they would freak out. Like we don't we don't know what we're supposed to do here because they haven't been in that. Yeah, they don't know what the red zone feels no, like. No, they do not. So hopefully we get that corrected because they 
They were. They didn't score a lot of points despite no, the 400 what, yards. Were they 16? Yeah. I mean, they were. They dominated offensively. They dominated that game and still didn't win by a ton. So they, let's turn that around too, Pittsburgh. We love Najee. We love Jalen Warren this week. Yeah. Would you play both of those guys over Zach Charbonnet, who plays this evening? Yes. Yes. Would you play them? Um, would you play James Conner on the other side over Charbonnet? No. I the I know nothing ever came out. At least I didn't see anything come out about. No, he's James fine. Conner. And I watched him after the game on the field, high five and everybody, smile on his face. Something weird happened. Like he didn't find his way back out to the field from the locker room. He made the wrong turn <laughs> and like never a, got like back a to spinal the spinal tap. He never got Hello, back Cleveland. to the field. <laughs> they could not find him. It was infuriating. It made no sense. That's, now, I mean, I don't. Apparently, it was not an injury, but something weird happened. He should play this week. The game should be close. Yeah, he should. He be should this, get seventy-five. He's playing his steps. former team. This is always an opportunity players want. Do I have any confidence? I do not. Yeah, my confidence is not high. I would still play him over Charbonnet. Um, he, he's great around the goal line. Should the Cardinals find themselves there? We know that. Um, so you've got, I think, a higher touchdown opportunity. The Steelers are not quite as good a defense as the Cowboys. Um, the question that I have, though, because I, I think most people kind of know, you know, whether they need to start James Conner or not. But Kyler is a big question here. The, yeah. the Steelers have not given up a lot, uh, even when you adjust for schedule to the quarterback position. Now, they've played an incredible amount of backup quarterbacks as well, so that could factor in. But Watt looks dominant right now as a pass rusher, and Kyler looks a little bit off. He's got, you know, he's he's got the rust or still figuring out this new system where, you know, he's completing 59, 60% of his passes. That's not how he's been in his career. So, you know, we, would you would you start – the Herbert or the Russell Wilson or Kyler. He, he I think people I'd, that with I'd, Kyler I'd start have a question. Both, I'd start both those. Over yeah. Kyler? Over Kyler. It's tough because Kyler has looked bad. The Cardinals are not scoring, and yet he's coming through for fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you want to start him over Russ, I don't blame you there. I think that one's a toss-up. But it's nerve-wracking to go into Pittsburgh. Yeah. Pittsburgh is uh, a good team. And Kyler looked so bad last week that it just – I don't feel like the momentum is there that makes me want to start him. And yet over 20 fantasy points. I know. I know. I believe this is the highest percentage chance of rain on the week uh, at 60% chance of rain. Kenny Pick has never had 20 fantasy points this entire year. <laughs> Kenny Pickett has been single digits in five of his 11 games. So uh, I believe on a on a points per game basis, he was below Zach Wilson and like players that you know just we we mock nonstop, but we haven't had the opportunity because the Steelers win games. Yeah, and even last week when they had all that offense, he was eleven eleven point six fantasy points. So not a great option. Deontay Johnson, George Pickens. I yeah. mean, both of them are yeah. very nerve wracking starts on a weekly basis. They are, and I, I think you've seen you know more and more that. You can run on the Cardinals so easily. You can get leads on the Cardinals that the the wide receiving options aren't always the best. And you had Pat Fryermuth in this new system, first time with the offensive coordinator change going away from Matt Canada, used in the slot, running routes in the middle of the field where they should have been throwing the ball forever. He had an insane 47.8% target per route run. So when he was running a route, that was where Kenny Pickett was looking. So I do agree that uh, Deontay and George Pickens, they're, they're nerve-wracking. Hollywood Brown, 6 for 88 last week on 12 targets. I do think that he's in play this week. Uh, I'm I'm fine. Like I, I would play Hollywood over Deontay and Pickens. I would as well. Um, we've talked about, or Kyle's talked about a lot, that Hollywood is a uh, – he, he beats man coverage a lot. And right now, Pittsburgh is running the sixth highest rate of man in the league. So the matchup seems like it'll work. 12 targets last week. We know there's talent there, so I, I don't mind starting Hollywood. 
Here's a stat for Trey McBride, who we know is dealing with the groin injury. But over the last month, he's received more first read targets in the Arizona offense than Kelsey has received in the Kansas oh, City offense. Oh, let's go. However, all that excitement has not necessarily translated into monster performances the last couple of weeks. Not yet. Five for 43, seven for 60. Seven for 60 is pretty darn good for a tight end. No, oh, I, I agree. I agree. It's just, um, you know, he's been in the end zone once this year. Cardinals have looked bad on offense. A little nerve-wracking with the groin injury. Like, I, if you have him. Assuming that he practices this week and looks like he's full go, I'm going to start him over all of the middling options we've discussed so Najoku. far today. Um, I think I would go Najoku there. He's, okay. His targets have been so high. All right, uh, moving on. The Miami Dolphins are 8-3. and three. They take on the 4-8 and eight Washington Commanders. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Miami minus 9.5. The over-under is 49.5. That's a lot of points. Miami is number one in yards per play. They have been a machine. Uh, Tyreek Hill oh, yes. yeah. Did, is he's... unstoppable. I mean, except for did not practice Wednesday, but, you know. Yeah, he's he's been doing stuff like that all year. I so far not not panicked. If we hear he anything got, else, let us know. Um, he got shook during the game, like this past week. Yeah, like pretty much right away. Oh, right, because you had yeah that yeah and like a and I mean they they mummified that ankle multiple multiple times. He kept playing. Yeah, it, when when the injury happened, it was a uh oh. Uh -oh. The week before it was the hand. I mean yeah. he he's been banged up, but. Waddle and Tyreek are must starts this week. Oh, I mean, Ty Tyreek has just been so good; it's it's almost unquestionable. Like it, the his fantasy finishes on the week. He's finished as the wide receiver one twice, the wide receiver two twice, the wide receiver three twice, the wide receiver four. Like he's the fantasy MVP. Yeah, he's the best. He's the best fantasy asset. I think he's even uh, been more valuable than Christian McCaffrey. It's it's between those two guys, but. Um, and this matchup is literally the best matchup for wide receivers in the league. So, yeah, both those guys, Waddle, Hill, no question. And Tua, it's a must start for Tua. And the running backs, Mostert is going to be out there. Devon Achan, uh, do you get a do you have a read yet on whether I, you'll have him back out on the field? I do not have a read yet. Um, obviously, they didn't put him on IR. Uh, I I think there's a chance he could play this week. It's going to be another, you know, steel underpants moment where last time he came back off of this injury, I was fine putting him right in my lineup, and I paid the price for that. And so you go, well, you fooled me once. You know, I, maybe you, you want to wait and see. Everyone's going to have to decide for their own. You cannot predict a re-injury. Obviously, we know that that can happen, and that's a good reason to bench him, especially if you've got another option. For me personally, where I have him, when HN is active, I'm going to put him back in my lineup. What's the uh, fool me twice thing? Shame on shame, shame on shame on me. So that's I will take willing to risk yep, it. Willing to risk it. Uh if he's out, Jeff Wilson could be a flex worthy consideration considering the Dolphins whoop teams that they're supposed to whoop most often, and it's easy to do that to Washington. Uh I'm terrified. I'm playing against Tua. I hope the running backs go crazy. That's that's what you hope for. Uh, Sam Howell, Howell, he will be throwing the ball a ton in a, in an effort to come back. You think they're going to let him throw the ball a lot, considering the last couple games? He's only thrown the ball 42, 52, 45, 44, <laughs> 45, 44 times. Oh, my gosh. That's insane. It's, um, and, 700, he's run, and he's running. 782 attempt pace in the last six weeks. <laughs> Oh man, insane! And this game, this game, he'll crack fifty. Um, I have, I have tremendous. This is an area of disagreement for the week. I have tremendous confidence in Curtis Samuel this week. I think Curtis Samuel is the one of the wide receivers that I'm not worried about the target share I'm, being distributed elsewhere. Well, I am in agreement with you, so I don't know who's disagreeing. Well, it was Jason. I think Jason's oh, in agreement. Then we are in disagreement with Jason. I am not in complete disagreement with myself. Um, <laughs> I, I the the way that I view it is absolutely Curtis Samuel could have ten plus targets, but we just we see these little disappearing acts where all of a sudden Jahan Dotson has twelve targets one week and then zero the next, or you know Terry McLaurin's the first, or Logan Thomas is just super involved and that he's not involved. 
Um, there's going to be enough passes here where I don't think you have to be scared to play Curtis Samuel because if he throws the ball 50 times, you know, and he only gets 20% of the targets, you're double-digit targets. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, and they're, they're going to get their butts kicked. I mean, Brian Robinson. you got to hope that he catches passes. Which he has not caught a lot of passes since Curtis Samuel and Antonio Gibson got back. Was that two weeks? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he was, he was. Uh, Gibson played forty six percent of snaps last week. Well, and you expect that kind of, you know, the, if if Gibson is more the pass catcher, you, I mean, the before the game is played out, the expectation here is that Miami's going to hop out to an early lead, keep the lead, grow the lead, and Washington will be in pass catching mode. So it, it scares me a little bit more to play Brian Robinson. Anything else from this game you guys want to discuss? No. Welcome to Starts of the Week, presented by Purina Pro Plan. Well, Mike, go ahead. Yeah, so I'll kick it off because it's from that that uh, game we just talked about, and it is Tua, where it has been. And the reason I'm putting him in as a start of the week is just make sure you have the confidence because it's been a tough stretch here. For, for managers who have started Tua each and every week. But this is where he will succeed. They they beat up on bad teams. Washington is dead last in passing yards allowed, passing touchdowns, schedule adjusted points to the quarterback. I mean, this this is a game that Miami should score. Like, they should hit their team applied total of 30 points, and a lot of that will, will come through Tua. My uh, start of the week this week is Brock Purdy. Going to Philadelphia, he leads the NFL in yards per attempt. And the matchup against uh, Philly for San Fran, I mean, they're going to have to throw the ball so much. Hope he's got big hands. Opponents because of the rain. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Opponents are throwing 68% of the time against Philadelphia. For context, that is the highest rate in NFL history through 12 weeks. And it actually came down. It came down. It was at 70%. It came down with Josh Allen's 51 passing attempts last week through 11 games. Philly is on pace to allow 4,300 passing yards and 35 passing touchdowns. That's where you beat them. For more context, that is exactly the same numbers as what Josh Allen had as the quarterback won last season. So Brock Purdy is in a perfect matchup against Philly. I'm going to go with Russell Wilson against Houston. Unlimited. Russ uh, is back to old Russ in, in some very important ways. He leads all quarterbacks in touchdown rate. That was something that literally was his uh, his habit in Seattle during the good years. Mm -hmm. He's got the lowest interception rate in the NFL, and this is not last year's Houston. They are bleeding points to the quarterback. They rank 29th in schedule adjusted against quarterbacks. They're on a roll. They won five straight. Uh, I like Russ this week. I think he gets a couple touchdowns. I was going to say, you, you feel good or do you need to talk to my blacksmith? No, I feel good. I don't need right. any uh, – okay. I, I don't think it's an underpants situation. <laughs> All right. But thank you. Thank uh, you for as, the offer. <laughs> you are welcome. I got him on speed dial. Yeah, no, I believe it. Uh, as we said, I, don't, I think Andy and I said this on Monday or something. We uh, were calling dibs <laughs> on start of the week. For Steelers running backs, I got Najee uh, last week. I got Jalen Warren <laughs> last week without. Uh, Matt. All your arguments, apply them yeah. to my guy too, and we'll leave it there. Well, so Najee was 15 for 99 and won, and and one of the most angry strong runs of the season, moving the whole pile, getting out of the pile. He looks just he looks like Najee could be back. And we're we're definitely not there. But we're crossing our fingers that we are going to get to that point. And on top of that, Arizona has allowed 16 rushing touchdowns in 12 games, 140 rushing yards per game. Just look at look at Kyron and Royce, who also had a fine game for the opportunities he was given. Andy. Yeah, I got Jalen Warren, and you've got <laughs> Najee Harris, and it's for all the same reasons, and both of them will be great. And Warren was the better one for a couple weeks, and Najee took the cake last yeah. week. And um, if you have them, play them. Yeah, I agree. Uh, my running back start of the week, Zach Moss. <laughs> my guy. <laughs> I said it at the beginning of the season, and I'll say it again. Zach Moss is a league winner. Oh, man. I've always been this is so great. a known Moss supporter, uh, like a Moss truther, always. I've never wavered on my love 
for Zach the, the Moss. So why waver now? <laughs> so, I, mean, I won't. Last time we saw Zach Boss, as I call him, against the Titans what? Uh, was week no. five. Boston. <laughs> you don't like that one? No. Uh, well, I talked about it earlier. 165 yards, two touchdowns. He was the running back two on the week. And Shane Steichen already literally came out and, and suggested that Zach Moss is going to get an overwhelming majority of the carries as he did earlier in the season. The work will be there. I know Tennessee is usually good against the run, but Zach Moss is involved in the passing game. He is a centerpiece of this offense, and he's just one of, if not the best, running back of all time. All right. Unlike Jason, I will not pretend that I have liked this guy all year, so you have to know that I am feeling it this week. It's Adam Thielen. You're feeling it? I am feeling good. He gets to play. It's the, not even you can't even tell what he's saying anymore. I think he said he's feeling good. Yeah, oh. I, I said I'm feeling good. But oh, I, you know, whatever, yeah. it's close enough. He gets to play the Tampa Bay. Buccaneers. This is a bold take after last week. Yes, and that is that's why I'm going with the start of the week of of Adam Thielen. Last week was so unbelievably bad. Huge turn. How bad was it? Well, the coach lost his job afterwards with the turnaround. I expect that they will get back to Adam Thielen. And then the matchup, the Bucks ranked 27th in expected uh, points per pass attempt, 29th in schedule adjusted points to wide receiver. I am taking the three target, one reception game, and I'm throwing it in the garbage because he was averaging over 10 targets a game. All right, uh, Jason, go ahead. Uh, I'm pairing with my quarterback start of the week. I want Brandon Ayuk against Philadelphia. The, the matchup is perfect. I just talked about that. The Eagles rank 31st in schedule just fantasy points to wide receivers. Just do all the same stats again. Yeah. Um, here are the wide receivers averaging 85 receiving yards and 40% of their team's air yards. Tyreek Hill, A.J. Brown, Jamar Chase, and Brandon Ayuk. He's, been, he's, he's yeah. like he's an elite player. Obviously, the, the Niners don't always need him, but this matchup That's is That's the crazy thing is he's got those numbers, but they don't always need him. Yeah, and, it's like and, they opt into him on certain weeks. And this is a week I think they're going to opt into him. In fact, part of the reason I think that is what we saw a couple weeks ago they played Tampa Bay. Um, and Tampa Bay is very similar to Philly. They're great at stopping the run. You really have to throw on them. And so what did they do? They threw they, they threw on him, and Brandon Ayuk had an awesome game. Um, and I think Brandon Ayuk with my Purdy stack will be great against Philly this week. I'm going Josh Downs against Tennessee. Let's not ignore 13 targets last week. They play fast. They throw the ball to a consolidated uh, couple of wide receivers. It's Pittman. It's Downs. If you're in a PPR league, I think Downs might end up a league winner this year. And Tennessee is tremendously bad against the pass. They're bottom five. Um, and this was even with Carolina struggling against them. I love Josh Downs this week. Yeah, I think Josh Downs is a great play. But just just for the record, if you had Michael Pittman or Josh Downs, who would you? Pittman. Would you? Okay, I'm just yeah. making sure real quick. Yeah, uh, I'm going to go with John Johnson as my start of the week at the tight end position against Detroit. I I loved Juwan last year. He kind of broke out, had the seven touchdowns, ended up the tight end 11. We, we kind of ran over everything. Seven targets, ran the most routes on the team. And Detroit since week eight, allowing almost 27 points per game, which is 30th in the NFL since that time. I, he, with all the injuries for the Saints, Juwan should be in line for another big target share. My tight end start of the week is Evan Ingram oh, versus Cincinnati I love it. on Monday Night Football. The targets, they keep piling up. Just no touchdowns yet for good old Schmevin. He is <laughs> fourth right now in targets per game with 7.2. He leads the Jaguars in targets and receptions versus zone coverage. Cincinnati runs zone a very nice 69% of the time, and they are dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points to tight ends. We've been targeting. You love those matchups. I love those matchups, and Evan Ingram is talented, and they're, you know, the a lot of times when these teams themselves are bringing up how long it's been since a player's gotten a touchdown, they try to force that issue every So now Evan now. Ingram is going to be a must start this week. I think. Well, Evan, just about everybody. I think Evan Ingram is a great start this like, week, yes. Uh, Kind of guarantee we're talking about here. I wanted to make a touchdown I did guarantee, too. All right. but he only what? scored in three games last year. It's not. It's not his. This uh, we're running out of games. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So, uh, uh, do you? Uh, this takes a lot of courage. Yes, I would start Evan Ingram over Pat Fryermuth. That's what you're getting at. Am I? I think so. That is my opponent's matchup. Uh, he has to make that decision. He could do whatever he wants. I just, I just meant like you went out there and you just put the foot clam first. I did. 
Foot plan I, first. Jason Moore's is, motto. This is what I meant yesterday. You were asking where it, where it came from when we were talking about uh, Calvin Ridley. It was because I knew I was going to say his teammate, Evan Ingram, I would start him over Pat Fryermuth. David Njoku is my start of the week at the tight end position. I traded for him at the deadline specifically for this matchup. You know, he's heavily involved. The Rams, they're dead last against the tight end over the last eight weeks. Njoku is a physical force. He's been the most reliable pass catcher. It could be DTR. It could be Flacco. I don't care. I mean, you're sitting there with a injured Amari Cooper and no one. I mean, Elijah Moore drops every other pass. And Cedric Tillman is just getting introduced to the offense. David Njoku's targets are out of this world. I love it. So I think this week is going to be great. All right, that is it for starts of the week. Thanks again to our thanks again to our sponsor, Purina Pro Plan Sport. Pro Plan Sport provides fine-tuned nutrition for strength and stamina that enables dogs and owners to take on life's adventures together. Pro Plan Sport, high performance fuel for active dogs. It all starts here. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. Last week on the Boom Boom Kicker, the Megalodon bit the plane's derriere, and now I'm parachuting with McManus. <clears throat> with wind blowing, cheeks flapping, soon I was unstrapping. Some say I looked like Winnie the Pooh, for a weather balloon became my ride. I landed truly mortified, face to face with Atlanta's Young Way Koo. Where did the balloon come from? Well, it was just in the air so, while I was falling. So you man. landed on a weather balloon. Yeah, I mean, I got lucky. and I thought know, those were way up in the sky. Well, it, eventually it took me up. But then, <laughs> you know, it, just, it was on the way. It was Someone on the just, way. Just it released it. was really lucky, and I was like Winnie the Pooh grabbing the balloon, flying up. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Owl thought you were the balloon. Oh, thanks, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind. I would play Pat Fryermuth over Evan Ingram. Wow. Um, thanks, Jay. <laughs> Young Way Koo, huh? Young Way Koo. All right, tomorrow, what do we got going on? More matchups? The fantasy face-off mm. with the Wheel of Shame. Bring it on. And uh, more injury updates for you as you get ready for week 13. We're here to help. Let's get that Foot Clan title so you can uh, celebrate pantsless like Winnie the Pooh running through the streets. Uh, dunking on all of your league mates. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. Thanks again for joining us. Thanks to everybody who shared all those Spotify wrapped yesterday. That was yeah. fun, and we'll catch you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.